Welcome back, DangerCast, to the first podcast of 2019. We have Jeremy Rutar in-house today, who is one of the organizers of Yellow Vest Canada. We uh, sit down and kind of talk about what those guys have been up to and um, all the activities and planning or uh, events and all that bullshit that's going on with them. Also, just a little reminder, if you use the code PODCAST69, you'll receive 15% off your order for Danger Cats merch. Also, we've got all sorts of new content up on DCTV. Yeah, that's right. The uncensored app that we operate. If you want to check that out, you can check it at uh, www.watchdctv.com. And yeah, all right. Here's the first podcast of 2019. Danger Cats, welcome back. I got Jeremy Rutar with the Yellow Vest movement here in Edmonton. Probably it's, I guess that movement is Canada wide, and you it would be just you take care of the Edmonton jurisdiction then mostly then, or you work with outside uh, um, groups as well. Well, I, I organize the Edmonton area, and yeah, it is the Canada like Yellow Vest Canada is the national wide Canada movement, but it's uh, it's even bigger than that. If you, I know it's not getting a lot of mainstream media coverage, but it's actually an international thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. Find it. It's it's all, um, I guess mainly democratic societies, right? All, all, all the Western societies that are getting that are feeling the pinch of this, and to me, it's just a wave of communism coming across. I've seen it now in Edmonton with my own eyes, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, do you, is there a lot of resistance that you're finding, like, here in the city that you guys are getting, or not really? Not so much anymore, honestly. Uh, the first two weeks, we had a lot of um, Antifa pushback, but part of that was from that other rally, I think, that was going on, right. claiming to be Yellow Vest. Uh, right. Once we separated ourselves from them, I don't really see them show up much anymore. Yeah. So to me, that means maybe we're on the right direction or if we're even winning the leftover. <laughs> yeah, no shit. And <laughs> we all know that's difficult as it is already. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some lunacy. I, like, I don't know. I try and see everything on both sides of the fence all the time. Like, yep. how's this guy fucking thinking about this situation and all that? But some of it, man, is just so fucking... Yeah, like, it's out there. Left Wow. Hockey stick, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I mean, even that, and I don't try to like, I don't try to uh, paint that all on the left or all on the right. Like, there is nuts in every segment of society. Absolutely. Right? So that's why I don't really agree with the identity politics, right? I don't. I like to give everyone a chance to. Uh, I like everyone to give me a reason not to. Right? Yeah. I don't hate anybody for any reason other than that, other than you're an idiot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid people come in all shapes, sizes, That's and right. races and religions. That's right. Every color, every color, <laughs> a collared, colored shirt too. White collar, blue collar, orange <laughs> collar. That's right. So how many weeks consecutively have you been uh, do, getting rallies like at legislative or anything around the city or anything like I that? I think uh, this is going to be week six coming up. Wow. Yeah, and it's getting a little bit bigger and it's getting a little bit more focused every time. That's something that I'm really proud of the Canadians that are standing up, right? That aren't right. falling for just the racist smear. And I mean, the media is doing the best to shut us down, and I understand why. We we are fighting the establishment, right? And they're yeah. right in their, they're right in Trudeau's back pocket now. So absolutely. Um, everyone who has been there now, you're yourself included, has seen what's actually being said there. It's, Man, is it is it inaccurate to say the least? The stuff that they're printing about us. Oh, for sure. And I'm, uh, I just read something the other day. I don't. I can't remember if CBC printed it or uh, released it, but it was like neo Nazis are on the rise in Canada, and uh, like it just a yep, st- like the dumbest shit I've ever heard. And like I think it was Ralph Goodall that just made a made the tried to connect us as the like brown shirts from Nazi Germany or from Italy right like yeah I, there's 65 year old women and children out there just worried about the state of their country and they're getting compared to this like right like where I don't yeah. know where these people draw these connections from but it, it, it's definitely interesting and I'd like to like you know talk to them and see how they connect the dots and everything like that and unless it's just like hey you have to write this article whether you you, you fucking want a job then here yeah. you go here's your article you write this and I, th- I think you hit the nail on the head with that I've definitely given um, I've given a couple of interviews to CBC so far at each of our rallies and yeah. I know 
if you say Rothschild or Soros, those are keywords that are going to get me out. But I think you, I showed you the video of my last speech. There's nothing about that still not aired. It's not yeah. going to make it to air. No. Because right? it doesn't fit their narrative of us being unintelligent, radical, rednecks. And you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It doesn't work for them. Oh, and you definitely notice, like, um, when CBC or Global, are like, you, 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 oh, they're, it's evident. They're going to pick out the fucking lunatics that yep. are uneducated and, like, can come across as dumb as possible. Well, it's, like, it's whatever they can fit, right? It's, yeah. Uh, the media is so good at taking a little snapshot or a little excerpt, and it's just that if you take that one little piece without any context and add the right headline, the right picture, all of a sudden you're off to the races, right? Yeah. They're so good at it. Yeah. Which is why um, I've been encouraging everyone to record our own media. I think um, a lot of people, we're doing a pretty good job at that. Uh, there's lots of truthful coverage of the protests all across Canada. This isn't just Edmonton, right? Yeah. I think 70 cities was allowed, or 70 cities and towns. Mind you, some of those are just one single guy on the, on an overpass with his dog, but I still salute that guy for standing up for his country, right? Absolutely. It was, uh, I was just talking to a comedian last week, and, and um, he he brought up a good point and he's like you know he's like i like that people are standing up and getting out and talking more and like he's brown dude and he didn't give a shit and he's like you know everybody has the rights he's like i would rather see neo-nazis in the streets than in the basements conglomerating and putting yep. all this together and exactly that i would that's it that, i think he hit the nail on the head there too yeah uh, there's so much there's so much corruption everywhere um <laughs> like I, I try to drive home to people this isn't a party just for getting true to out and getting conservatives in this is about government accountability in all forms and you got people like these neo-nazis kind of hidden all the way through our society it's not that's just one example of those people but the banksters and the fraudsters and the people that you yeah know, the biggest criminals in the world are the people running our government absolutely by far by well, far well look how easy it is for them to get off charges and it's just like keep pushing it away you ask them the question they just push it off and like there's examples of it all the time you literally can go on and watch any interview where uh federal crime against a politician is brought up mm -hmm. and it's swept underneath the rug it's pushed away or they try and misguide you in a wrong direction where it's yep. like well you know we're still under uh investigation with this bullshit you are you it's already been stamped off gone and that's that right. person's record is clean well they hold they hold all the cards right yeah and, and that's something that we're trying to change and that's i think why we're getting so much blowback yeah right? it's we're trying to put the power of governing the country back into the power or into the hands of the people that are paying the bills which i think is only right Oh, yeah, and, like, uh, you know, everybody wants to retire, and, like, you want this, uh, y you want to be fucking, live your life, but when you're getting taxed up the ass, you're getting bent over every which way possible, and, and even with uh, what we're doing, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of people address us as heavily conservative or anything, like, but I'm more so, like, stand with the working, the blue-collar kind of, or even white-collar, whatever, as long as you wake up and... The you're average person. Yeah, you're yep. contributing and you're, you know, I don't think you need to be taxed as bad as what we are, but uh, I, I definitely find ourselves standing more with the working class than anything else. And I think, like, that's the way a country should be, right? It's yeah. The majority of the people are the bill payers, but we're getting we're getting stomped on by the very few. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And oh. even, like, when you're, when it comes to election times and stuff like that, I find, like, even when somebody's like, are you voting for Jason Kenney? It's like, I don't know, man. He kind of strikes me as a fucking idiot, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, my biggest problem, and it, it's something that we're trying to we're trying to put the focus on, is um, the hot issues are split between platforms. You Absolutely, know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like when you go to a garage sale or, or a yard sale. You never see anyone put all their good stuff in one box. You take one good thing and put it in every crappy box, and that's how you keep the system moving, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's part of the biggest thing. That's part of the divide and conquer. It's, it, can we just... <laughs> settle these issues as a country and move on as a society like there's there's so many more things that we should be spending our tax dollars on better than the wording of the canadian national anthem like the, the stuff like this just makes me sick man oh yeah and then what how much was that hockey rink outside of the parliament there this is like that's a, yeah. what was that a 20 million dollar to like, be there for a year yeah yeah, yeah. that's insane that could, that right there could cover like you know uh, some education or tuitions for fucking kids in universities and all that or improving education in um, elementary schools right up to high schools and you know yeah the, the list is endless really yeah. but but even then I'm, I'm not I'm not um, I'm not even gonna say that I'm a hundred percent against the concept of what he did but he didn't ask anybody if that's what we want to do with our money that's where the big part comes in he yeah. says he speaks for Canadians he speaks for all of us well Give us a chance to speak, then you'll find that you're you're not aligned with most of us. He's out of touch. Yeah, 
yeah it's it's definitely we're in this weird like gray area it seems like a lot of people are starting to wake up and you know you got act but the internet is like the, the their worst enemy that like, guy like, yep they didn't they didn't see this coming 40 years ago when they started this little plan that's for sure no fuck no <laughs> like now you're connecting people with same similar mindsets and it's easy to get the information that you want out whether it's false or not i yeah. mean I look how many fucking memes you come across that are just yeah but even that that's something i want to point out to people like yeah. anyone that's not on the yellow vest pages uh you'll know about it if you're in there but even even your facebook even your twitter all that stuff's all censored now you don't have the freedom of speech you think you do no you don't right it's uh, like you compare it to a gray area i compare it to being treated like a, a whole nation of children being told to shut up and eat their vegetables because that's what's good for you and don't question it right yeah but we're the ones paying the bills i, I would like to have a say on where our money is going right it's I, I, I don't and i don't think it's radical to be taking care of our homeless before we're giving away humanitarian aid to another country i don't think it's it's wrong to take care of our infrastructure before we help prop up another country for that's, sure that's not radical that's that's common sense you got to clean your own side of the street first you got to make your own bed before you can help the rest of the world right? uh, yeah absolutely it's like that neighbor that has 13 broken cars and weeds dr uh, fucking yeah. growing all in it but looking over the fence and be like wow fucking yeah. fla flowers are dying over there head, hey? of, head of the neighborhood watch yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's yeah it's it's fucking crazy and like i do agree with you and like what's uh, are you allowed to talk about the the saudi chick that just uh, I, I can i'm not i'm not okay. honestly i'm here just as jeremy ruter i'm not here as a, oh, okay. a, a as yellow bus right now like uh like that situation I, like my the 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 human being side of me is like fuck yeah that's good that, that just saves some girl's life and now yep. we can give her the freedoms that she should have in her own country and th i thought i read something like her her family is like disowns her or something like that or it was uh Fuck! I just read something about. But anyways, yeah, move. Well, welcome to my world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I read too much shit to that yeah. almost. And like, but even her, like, so she comes over and she like uh, wants nothing to do with what's happening in her country, the religions behind it, and all that comes here. And then we speak out on it. It's considered racism. Right. Or, right. Like, and, and that and that's what uh, like for me, that's what gets my blood boiling on most of this. It's not. Yeah. It, it, it's it's the hypocrisy like everyone's we're, we're preaching equality but there there isn't an equality there's always one group getting singled out and or whether it's one religion or one ethnicity or one particular east versus west side of the country there's it's everything they can do to keep us from uniting yeah now that we are uniting i think it's scaring the socks off the clown in parliament oh that, fuck yeah. acting as our prince here right yeah yeah well you're seeing it in france every day man there's something crazy happening there every fucking day like yeah that's a man that <laughs> that's a crazy situation over there right now i do i do keep an eye on it but it's just for because it's scary if um, you're looking at it as foreshadowing for what's coming to the, to the rest of our countries, right? Like they're using live ammunition over there now. I just seen someone got what it was a firefighter was shot by one of the, the riot police, really, right? So now <laughs> I, I don't know what kind of societal system you call that, but it's starting to sound like fascism really fast, right? Fucking right, it is. Yeah, I just read another uh, there was another fatality, or the man's in a coma still. I don't know if he passed away or not. But he got shot in the back of the head with yeah, one of the... Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah, with one... Was yeah. it live ammunition or was it I'm one not, of them rub, does rubber Does it bullets? matter? Does it matter, really? No, I'm not a bunch of, These are a bunch of citizens in, in like, uh, <laughs> winter parkas and yellow vests going up against guys in body armor and full yeah. riot gear. And now they have... But going from rubber bullets to live ammunition, like, it's scary, man. It's, it's scary. Fucking right, it's scary. And, and, it, and it's infuriating at the same time that you know with the media blackout and all the stuff around this like I'm, it's just you have to be able to see that this is not just a country per country problem this is a global problem yeah and the same people that are screwing over france are screwing over canada they're screwing over australia the same yeah. people screwing over our unions here in canada they have their little fingers in every pie fucking they, right they have their fingers in every pie it's the, it's the paid lobbyists and the banksters and until we get that crap out of our out of our government i don't really care who you elect i don't care if it's sheer or bernier they're still driving a wrecked car <laughs> yeah. i don't care if you change the driver the car is wrecked we got to fix the car before we can really move forward in any, yeah. in any meaningful sense absolutely and uh man the other day i was just watching uh that la 92 on netflix it's like the riot of like the rodney king riots and everything yes 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 and like the way it comes together like just from like like you said foreshadowing and everything as soon as you said that it made me think of it but yeah. like you look what happened even there with the media and everything they downplayed that so bad and mm -hmm. like 
getting in like one of the thoughts that ran through my head was like at the time like you know you didn't foresee the internet being what it is now yeah and now you can look back on a, an event like that and just you know you can kind of see it unfolding a little bit the same way you're being yep. constantly lied to like everything's okay everything's okay but now we have access to the information that we didn't do well they have they, yeah. they have a template right and they've, yeah. they've been following it doesn't matter what country it goes in it's it yeah. destabilize an area to, yeah. to like valid validate the reason for needing UN and a one world government and one police and one set of rules. Sounds really good. They're saying there's going to be equality. They don't say the level of quality is going to be very high. <laughs> yeah. We're all going to get the same, which pro to me doesn't mean very much. Right? No. They want you down. Yeah, paying they, taxes and pushing buttons and that's it. No yeah. critical thinking, no questioning the system that's screwing you every day, mm -hmm. right? Just push buttons and pay taxes. Keep you dumb as fuck. And fighting each other. <laughs> that's their other biggest thing, fighting each other. As long as I'm as long as they got Alberta fighting Quebec, they got just any division, man. Whether it's even the the elder generation talking about millennials, I'll tell you right now, I'm only 30 years old, but I'm here making a stand. Yeah. Right. It's there should be no division anymore. This is Canada standing up for Canadians. Yeah. Because there's dickheads from other countries that are running this country into the ground at an alarming rate. They don't even seem to be hiding it anymore. No, it's very <laughs> evident, man. Like the fact that we still have relations to Saudi Arabia just blows my right. fucking mind, right. man. <laughs> like, and, and people, you know, <clears throat> I'm not going to get into the pro-conservative, pro-liberal thing, but uh, uh, this is one of the things I was trying to tell some of my friends who leaned a little bit to the left that just wanted Harper out. Harper was aware of what was going on with that UN Security Council. Yeah. Who cares? Like, how how much hypocrisy do you need to have? Someone sitting on there is talking about human rights in a country that throws homosexuals off of roofs and stones rape victims, right? Yeah. Like, why, why, are, why are we in business with these people at all? No, I, I don't know. And that's another big part of this movement. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, the humanitarian process behind the, like, your humanitarian issues, sorry. Yeah. It just, especially for somebody that's uh, in power with us, or if in power, in quotations, let's call it that, would even you know bat an eye at that is beyond me like, it, you yeah know, it's, like, it's just the hypocrisy to me i i see it everywhere it's just across the board it's a stupid illusion isn't it it, it is it, it's virtue signaling and these are all new terms that have just come up in the last couple of years right and you, you watch them popping up I, I i was actually pretty politically um i i, I thought informed but um i kind of shrunk back a little bit when xenophobic got weaponized and oh, islamophobic yeah, yeah. got weaponized and right and it's for the average person, you're like, nobody wants to be called a racist, and that's enough to shut us up. But <laughs> I think everyone's awake to the games and stuff now, and nobody really cares anymore. You can only call me a bigot or a fascist or a racist so many times, especially when I got a man who immigrated from Iraq standing right next to me saying he's already seen the socialist crap. They've ran from that. Mm -hmm. People come to Canada to get away from these systems, and now we're allowing those systems to follow them here. Yeah. Right? It's the hypocrisy. It's yeah. just hypocrisy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's insane. Is you find that you have all a lot of all walks of life like uh, yeah. with you guys, eh? Yeah, but you'll 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 you won't find the media pointing a uh, pointing a camera at anybody unless it's they got a leather jacket and a beard, or they're a pale complexion because that fits their narrative. Yeah. Right? We're all alt right. It's not true. <laughs> it's no. not true, man. No, I um, well, one of the when I was out oh, when you guys were doing it, there was a man from Burma. Is it Burma? Yeah. And he was a child soldier. Yes. That's crazy, man. Yeah, so tell that guy that he's a white nationalist. Yeah. And tell that guy he doesn't know what socialism looks like. He moved here for a reason. Yeah. Right? And it's, so the media, again, just shame on you for, for not actually doing any real journalism, not actually talking to real people. You're, you're just grabbing the low-hanging fruit and running with it. Yeah, the, the idiots, like, the, yeah. They, I, I won't even call them that. I, they, everyone has a voice, right? But they're that's gonna, true, but, yeah. but they take they take whatever they can use as ammunition. Right? Spin it to fit their, yeah, yep. fit their posts. Uh, point in case, the first Edmonton rally, um, it was the one, the only time they put a yellow vest person, who wasn't a yellow vest, on the TV was that little Antifa kid, had his face covered and everything. He's telling, and then he's he's telling the news that he wants to see violence and burning cars and more emotion like France. And we told her after that guy's not speaking for the yellow vest. He's calling for, he's inciting violence. Like if you guys run with that, don't you kind of take the blame for that stuff? I won't say who the reporter was because the police had told me to kind of back off that, but again, this is stuff that really makes me mad. There's an abuse of the media being used against the people. Your freedom of speech is dissolving by the day. What you are allowed to say is shrinking by the day. Uh, do we even have to go over how serious not protecting our borders are? Like, 
any civilized country in the world knows. It, ask all the rich people living gated communities, right? They yeah. do need a little bit of security. Yeah, absolutely. And especially like even it's if it comes down to protecting the people that want to get away from what they left. Yes. Yeah, you um, you, you owe that to them. Or I, I think as a nation, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because otherwise we're advertising this freedom and this liberty and then they get here and they, they especially after going through a five year process or whatever it is to get here, they finally yeah. get here and then find that <laughs> they got sold a fake dream, right? Yeah. That, that's that's dirty pool. It is dirty pool. And the, the, even the immigration issue, like a lot of people are like, oh my God, and like losing their mind. But uh, I'm, uh, fuck, who am I to say anything? Why? <laughs> like, right? I don't. No. I, I tell you the truth, I haven't found very many people, and there are some out there, because again, you're going to have different voices from all extremes on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. But I haven't come across anyone that's just flat out against immigration. We're all from immigrants, right? Yeah. The thing is, it's migration. The reason why they changed the name, the wording of mi uh, illegal immigrant to migrant was exactly for this, just to cause social destruction, just to have people, it's a distractor. Yeah. Right? It, they're, they're, they're changing the language is what scares me the most. Uh, the next one I'm watching for is the Canada pension being changed. It won't be called a pension anymore. It's going to be called a something benefit because benefits can be taken away. Right? Keep your eye on that one. Yeah. This is all, it's all on the internet machine, cats and kittens. Check her out. <laughs> yeah, that, that lovely world you can get lost in for yeah. hours on end. Yeah, hey. the interweb <laughs> ra rabbit holes. <laughs> Yeah, um, what the fuck did I see the other day? It made me laugh. It was something about an egg getting the most likes on a Instagram post. Have you seen this? No, I haven't. The most liked picture on Instagram right now just broke the world record. I think it was like two or three days ago, and it's just a fucking picture of an egg. I'm surprised Global didn't spend five minutes on the national news covering it. Uh, I'm sure they did. I know like the, some major news outlets did cover this, and I fucking howled, man. Just unreal, right? Oh, like, man. Like, that right there is a story of its own. Is like a most liked picture on Instagram, and I seen a comment on there, and it was like... Everybody can come to this page to like this, but nobody can take five minutes of their time to try and like, you know, learn a new skill set right. or something. I know, like I know. That. Th that's it, that's not just a Canadian problem. There's apathy across the world, but I think yeah. Canadians are uh, <laughs> definitely hit it the worst. I think. Yeah. I mean, we're we're a nation of headline read headline readers, right? Oh. Scroll fuck. by, hit like, and not even read the story. Yeah. Or there's so many people out here. So far, digitally, we have we have huge numbers, right? Everyone seems to be on on that listens thinks that this is a just cause but the real life numbers don't reflect that no again apathy right yeah it's not, it's not, it's not easy to get up get up and go uh, marching around minus 25 in the snow but i'm telling you there were senior citizens out there so all you 30 year olds you don't have an excuse <laughs> if you care about your country stand up man <laughs> exactly yeah it's it's definitely interesting to watch this unfold just from like like i've said before like a lot of people are like you gonna you gotta get more involved with the yellow vest and like i get i get it up the ass all the time not in a gay way but you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> and not discriminating the gays or nothing like that just not my cup of tea but anyways uh yeah no like a lot of people like now um i guess look at us like kind of a voice because like i've said some wild shit and like whatever and like I think it's because people look at, uh, they look for truth speakers, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter how eloquently you speak. If you're speaking plain facts, it's something the media stopped doing a long time ago. That's yeah. why people like me did look to your podcast and stuff, right? Because you're, you're talking at least truthful. Yeah. And with like a little more humanity behind it and like, you know what I mean? Like we, sure the shit that we do is like a lot of comedic and whatever and just outrageously fucking stupid at times. <laughs> like dressing up like Trudeau and using a dildo for a microphone, you know? Like <laughs> Yeah, that was a good <laughs> yeah, we try and find the humor of it, and then when you try and get more, I find once you get, what, oh man, when you get in the rabbit hole, you can get deep when it comes in the political game. Oh yes, and it's the holes that lead to holes. Like man, I'm losing oh. a lot of my life at night trying to just fact find because it, it's great to be able to come out and be and tell you to lead the breadcrumb trail that, uh, yeah, so this is something I found and I can point you in the right direction. But there's so like you like you know there's so many facts that. Oh man. I wish I had that computer brain where I could just fire these out like the Rain Man, right? Because yeah. it, it helps oh, a lot. Yeah. But no, you just everyone just got to keep your, keep on doing your own research. For God's sake, don't trust the mainstream media for anything anymore at this point. Well, and if, like a lot of people fail to realize that the mainstream media is also written by a human being. Yep. And a lot of people don't like I. Every time I read something, I'm always skeptical about it and like whatever. Like the person that wrote this obviously has a little bit of emotion into it and ha where is he coming from how does he fit and like whether he votes this you almost you need people that sit in the middle that just 
that they don't give a shit, mm-hmm. but they care about a, a whole spectrum. And it, those are rare finds. Like, you're not going to find somebody like that all the time. Well, we're finding, uh, I'm actually finding a lot of them in this Yellow Vest movement, to tell you the truth. It's, yeah. It, you know what? A lot of, we got people in our supporters that were liberal voters that were lied to because they, they, they listened to what Trudeau ran on as a platform and it sounded good. But what he did, what he said and what he's doing don't line up. Yeah. So there's liberal supporters. We obviously have cons- our conservative uh, uh, leaning supporters, but we're of ultimately trying to bring everyone to the middle, right? Too far right or too far left, you're pissing on one half the country. Yeah. So we can get everyone to, start, you know, it's it, it's got to be a united thing. It can't just be for the betterment of Alberta, like the separation. It can't just be for uh-huh. the better of West versus East. It, it's not even about. Uh, it's about every Canadian having a bit of a better life, right? And it ultimately, and every Canadian ha- having a say in how this country is getting governed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You think that'll happen? A separate uh, or the Western se- a separate? To tell you the uh, truth, I really hope yeah. not. I really <laughs> hope not. I don't think. Um, like I get it, man. I'm from the West too, and I mean, like we're getting pissed on. But you have to understand that they're doing that on purpose. It's it's part of the divide to keep the East West thing fighting mm-hmm. with each other, right? Yeah. It's if Canada stands up all together at once, man, this is what's scaring the government. This is what's scaring the government. No more, I, I already see the vote splitting talks going on and the this and the that going on. I don't really care who you vote for, but I'll tell you right now, I hope you get up and vote because 37% voter turnout is horrendous. That's that's a disgusting thing. Yeah. We got so many people that are that have a voice on what's going on with the government, but if you didn't even vote last time, come on. Yeah, it's your democratic right, whether... Well, it's, 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 a, it's more than a right, it's a responsibility, really, yeah. right? And it's the same thing as I say about this movement, everyone... Like, I'm getting lots of thanks and stuff, but I'm not doing this for credit, I'm doing it because, in my mind, it's... <laughs> if I don't do it, who's going to? If the people doing this right now don't, when will someone do it? Yeah, right? absolutely. I even get, like, not that I... I'm with you on that, I don't really do anything, like... This kind of started by accident. Yep. And, like, I don't know, I was just voicing my fucking opinion one day, and, like, I looked and, fuck, I was doing, like, stupid little videos, and it was, like, I don't know, the hockey ones and stuff like that, yeah. and then one day I was, like, I was just reading some shit in the news, and, like, I I've, obviously I worked in the oil patch for a long time, and we were getting hosed, the cutbacks came, and then, like, you know, the carbon tax was scared out big oil, which caused us, our production to go down, and then I took a wage cut and an hour cut, and then like I'm getting fucked yep. at the end of the day. While all these big corporations are still making big money, and, and like who we work for was making big money, and, and, and squeezing out all the little companies, right? Yeah. Every time there's a but, this is all by design. Yeah. And then it just like out of fucking nowhere, I'm like fuck this, and I went on and just kind of said like fuck Trudeau and just acted like an outrageously outspoken oil patch guy and like. I know a lot the, of people. The, the funniest thing about that is, yeah. though, is that you had such a mass appeal, and I don't think Canadians are are radical at all in any sense. So if you're, even if you're saying stuff in, in a in a comedic way or a little bit left field way, the fact that everyone's listening and agreeing means that I think you're hitting the right topics. Yeah. Right. Yeah, especially when I it was I can't remember what it was. It was uh, the Sir John A. Macdonald statue. Mm. That's what it was. Yeah. And I thought that was so stupid. Like obviously we all know that. He pulled some horrendous acts back in the day. Yep. And to go and just, you know, why tear... I, I've always been like, why tear down the statue? Because it kind of raises questions and shows, like, you've, we've moved on. Like, you know, our morals have kind of fucking, you know... They're, Evolved a bit. Yeah, yeah. T- I would say quite a bit, you know. Like, we're a little bit more of human beings now. And, like when you look at that and then you can teach somebody be like hey back in the day some fucked up shit went down yeah. like they treated the natives well, well like, and, that, and that's what that's what scares me the most is when you start censoring history yeah uh, it, people who don't learn from, like those who don't learn from history they say they're destined to repeat it yeah right? <laughs> that's a scary idea to me that's a scary thought to me oh fuck yeah man it was like even like even like watching that hunting Hitler show, did you watch that? Yes, yeah, yeah. You start finding out that there was not like a lot of them high ups got away and like they're yep. in Argentina and trying to start this whole new Reich again. That's fucking scary shit. And like, well, and what then, else and, don't and, we know? And it went know? from it went from like a taboo, <laughs> almost conspiracy theory, to pretty much being proven 100% fact. But yeah. our history books haven't been updated, right? Like that's the thing. There's yeah. uh, it's it's mind boggling. I, I we don't have enough time to go into every rabbit hole on how many places this touches, but oh yeah, school, schools are definitely a big part of this now, like indoctrinating kids right off the bat. 
I, I don't care how much you paid for your for your uh, your education. You come out of a university and you think the best thing we can do in this country <laughs> is adopt socialism. I, I think they're reading, getting you to read the wrong books, in my in my opinion. Oh yeah, man. Like, uh, who is it? It's like a kind of a friend of a friend, and she's like, we, she grew up in Tabor, a small like you know redneck community, yep. blue collar community, and is now going to school out in fuck either ubc or somewhere somewhere on the coast like vancouver I, I, one of the schools out there heavily liberal anyway oh yeah. big time and she says like it is fucking wild some of the things that they will speak openly about and like like just the ideologies that they have on co- or university campuses yep. it's just fucking astronomical i can't I can't remember one of the, the the main issue that we were having beers, so <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> but I remember getting into the conversation with her, and it was like, holy fuck. Like, it was something to do with uh, an open border policy, and it was just... And if you, if you didn't agree with it, you're a bigot. And oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Like, you are fucking... You are basically the grand wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad, though, right? Yeah, yeah man. That's the thing. Like, And how much pressure is put on these kids where... And like you're saying, like your friend, they, they they went along with the BS just to get their degree and get the hell out of there, right? Yeah. How, how many people are a little bit weaker minded or just soak that right in like a sponge oh, and carry that on time. in life and you know what I mean? Yeah. It's <laughs> scary, scary oh, stuff. Fuck yeah. Like I... when, when in Western societies did facts become less valuable than ideologies and feelings? Yeah. When did facts go out the window? Right? Fuck, I don't know, but it needs to come back. It has to, it has to. And that's how we're pushing for this so much. I'm not, again, this isn't a right versus left thing. What I've encouraged beyond anything else is that the right could talk to the left intelligently. If we can't start talking as people without just screaming bigot and fascist at each other, and I'm right and you're wrong, this country is not going to go anywhere. We're going to yeah. be stuck right where we're at, if not worse, for another 50 years. Right? Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. Everyone wants to change. This is the change that has to come. It's your neighbor... And and the people living in your community, these are not these are not your enemies. The, the enemies are the people that are running your centralized bank system and taxing you out the ass until you can't afford to live, right? Oh, like my, yeah. my, my sister's university educated. Uh, she works two jobs around Christmas time just to bring home a little bit of extra scratch for Christmas presents. She pays extra taxes every year. Like how is this how is this right? It's not right. It's just that that little bit extra that so, so she could buy some presents actually put on the next tax bracket so she loses money and's got to make that up somewhere, and then. <laughs> Where is that money going? That's my other big problem. It's not paying for Canadians. I'll tell you that right now. It's not helping Canadians. No, not at all. It's not helping. Like, well, yeah, like you said, it, it proves right there. She went out to go and make some extra fucking money to yep. put some presents on it. She must have kids or something, I assume. No, no, no. no. But th- th- this is honestly just a, this is just a wrap up bills at the end of the year because that's just the way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and I mean, I like I'm not, <laughs> I'm by no means a poster child. Like I've had some fun. I've done my partying and stuff. My sister fits inside the box they told her to fit inside, and it didn't. It, it's a lie. Yeah. You fit in that box. They tell you you're gonna get ahead in life. But the fact is, if you fit into that little box they paint for you you're gonna stay exactly where you are and that's the whole plan oh yeah right? it's even like my mom when i was younger would always be on me you gotta get a good job you gotta go to school and get a good job yeah and that, 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 well they're so, and they're, yeah, they're talking about back when houses cost seventy thousand right? dollars yeah <laughs> like you could you could be a plumber and live like a go on two vacations a year yeah. and still fucking yeah man. live a good life yeah it's it's you know that, that's the biggest thing. I'm not against having taxes. We need taxes to pay for stuff by all mm-hmm. means. But like, our as a, on my side, I work in the oil patch too. I'm a, I'm a union pipe fitter, and we're watching our wages get cut back and back. But the cost of living is going up and up. So I want to see the criteria on where they decide how much is enough for us to live off of. Yeah. It's, right. Because we only we seem to be on the losing end of everything. Yeah, and it's crazy to like compare. Let's pick 1972. Like, what a person paid for shit in 1972 to now? Like, fuck, you always hear, like, your grandpa, back in my day, a carton of eggs cost two cents. I could go there with $15 and feed you for yeah, 30 all, years. Yeah, all, all that was required to be successful <laughs> is to be a hard worker. Yeah, right? That's all yeah, you had yeah. to do, and now that's not even enough. Now you also need to be a conniver and a bit of a thief, and, like, that's the way the system is built. Fuck, yeah. Step on the people that you need to to get up to that next step. Or that's what it looks like to me. Again, I'm only speaking my opinion. I don't... I'm not speaking on behalf of all yellow vests. I want to make that clear. Again. <laughs> this is just Jeremy talking here. That's fair. But yeah, no, it's it's fucking, uh, it's it's crazy. It's just like even uh, 
us trying to be entrepreneurs and do all these things in media and all that and like voice opinions and we like uh, even the clothing like and shit like that like it's harder now to be an entrepreneur I find than any time like, yeah well here especially that's why yeah. that's why we outsource everything right and yeah. that's the way it's built even as far as I don't know people who don't really know about the construction industry but that NWR refinery that was all we outsourced the modules to that they all came from o- overseas they were all built wrong so they're, they're all saying you know union workers made this job go way over cost no it's not they tried to save a couple of pennies on every dollar which I get when you're working in billions that's a big savings big but time built to substandard conditions like we have the best people in the world for oil and gas here why we keep like prove like proof of point they come here uh i i have i have friends have been personally been um uh cherry picked to go over and start help set up uh new refineries in kuwait and like overseas yeah yeah canadians are the best people we do have the best way of doing everything it's uh, so why why is our oil landlocked? Why why are we the only energy uh, only energy producing company that's under under attack? It just doesn't make sense to me. There's no cap in Texas. I'll tell you that right now. They're not capping their oil. There's no cap in Venezuela. No. There is no cap in Saudi Arabia. They do what they want, and that includes their human rights of workers and their environmental rights. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's where I touched that on my speech last week, and it's just uh, for people who don't understand, oil is sold as a commodity, which means supply and demand, which means if we don't make it. It's not just a zero effect, it's much worse. It's a net zero effect. If we don't make it, someone else will make it for the world. And they're going to make it in crappier conditions. They're going to make it... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm all for green energy and stuff. I'm all for renewable energy resources. But we don't have we don't have that technology here yet. We are still oil dependent. So why are we shooting ourselves in the foot and propping up countries like Saudi Arabia and Venezuela to keep them rich, right? Why, why are oh, we pumping yeah. that oil in here? We have all the oil we need right here and we do it the cleanest way in the world. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Like, um, and even to touch on that too, is why not use right now as oil being the resource to fund that next technology or like, you know what I mean? And, and which it does. I, yeah. think, I think in Canada, the biggest green energy um, donations were made by oil producing companies. Don't get, like they are trying to find a way to do it as efficiently as possible too. That's the bottom line for them. Yeah. Right. But just, uh, yeah, it, just the, that that—that's one of the things that drives me wild too. I'm sure it is for you too. That just the demonization of uh, of our energy sector. Oh. The, the people that are paying for the Stars helicopter, by the way, right? Like, yeah. Oh yeah. How many lives in, in my lifetime? That's not paid for by David Suzuki. That's not paid for by the fuck George no. Soros Tide Foundations. They don't give two shits about us. No. Fuck no. Yeah. And like. I don't know, the oil patch is just such, and like you, I, I guess like the people that scrutinize it too, is what I'm trying to get at, I'm just jumbling words at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you, you enter, encounter the the people that protest and too are just so ignorant to the fact, like I had a man when I was, uh, when I was working in Tabor, I was working for a uh, um, supply company, so we would supply all the batteries and uh, pipelines and all construction okay. around in the area. And I was um, in the city where I lived in at the time was Lethbridge. And this fucking hippie comes up to me and he's like started reading the back of our truck and all this. And he's like, oh, what do you do? And I was like, oh, we're an oil field supply company. Oh, that's damaging the earth, man. And like went on and like one of the dumbest fucking rants I listened to. It basically went on like, yo, you're ruining the earth and all this. I watched him hop into a 1972 minivan, <laughs> and this fucking thing blue blew. smoke coming oh, out the back. Oh man, she was burning rich. I was like, yeah, there's your fucking answer right there, you dumb cunt. Like, yeah. you are, you're just as equal as the problem as anybody else. Like, yeah, no, I agree. The, 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 I think the biggest thing with our oil, when it comes down to it, is yeah, one, some of it it's organic. Uh, like people are organically protesting mainly because they've been fed misinformation and they fall into this whole yeah. dirty oil thing, right? Yeah. Um, but the other bigger part of it is people need to realize how much of this is paid lobbyists. Yeah. Paid lobbyists. There, there's, <laughs> you know, Americans don't want to have to pay any more for our oil. They're, they they like the system they have set up, right? Oh, fuck yeah. OPEC likes the fact that we're bringing in Saudi Arabian oil. They don't want to change that setup. No. It's not, it's not just our government. There's the, It's the people behind our government pulling these strings, right? This is what the protest is about. This is the enemy of the people. Uh, I, read a, I read a meme. I don't know how appropriate it will be, but it's... The funny thing about these protests is going out and getting uh, called a racist, getting called a fascist, just for trying to stand up for Canada. Uh, the meme was, imagine you're in a room with 100 people, and 93 of those people are being beat, raped, and robbed 
by seven, right? Yeah. You you point out, hey, I think these seven people are a problem, and half the room turns around and defends them and calls you an asshole <laughs> and a racist. That's really the world we're living in right now, right? <laughs> You're not wrong. But I think it's changing. I do want to believe that it's changing. I do want to believe that people are waking up and people are making their own decisions. Um, the proof's in the pudding that we have more and more supporters coming out every weekend. Yeah. Um, so for all the LFS out there listening, thank you for all, everyone that's doing hard work. This is not a one-man job. This is There's hundreds of people working from coast to coast, also talking with international people. We're trying to, this is a unifying thing, and we do take it very seriously. But um, just keep coming out. We, we're the, the splash is going to get bigger and bigger, and eventually, especially that convoy we got headed to Ottawa, Trudeau is going to listen. He's got to listen when town gets shut down. Oh, yeah. Right? That's a big one. Anyone who's uh, looking to get a whole, or looking to get into that, uh, Glenn Carrot is the organizer. Um, you can find him on the United Yellow Vest page, and he's got a couple of girls. They're doing it all. It's 100% legit. Like it's you got there's registrations and proper number counts and so on and so forth. Itinerary set up. Um, so if you're willing or if you're willing and capable of getting behind that, by all means, check out that information and get on. That you know, and again, it's not just about oil and gas, but that is a big part of this. And regardless, that's a great vehicle that's going to get so much attention to this. If he doesn't hear that, you can just realize how far his head, his head really is up his ass. <laughs> oh, right? yeah, big time. Oh, yeah. They, 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 that that definitely right there, that convoy is grabbing a lot of eyeballs right now. I'm seeing that pop up a lot on a lot of pages, forums, and... Well, and as it should, it right? fucking right, it should. Like, like Glenn made the good point, it's... These protests are great to see out in Western Canada, and it, and it really is a whole Canadian thing, but... Don't kid yourselves. Trudeau doesn't look at what happens in Western Canada. He doesn't care what happens yeah. in Western Canada. As long as we behave ourselves and don't start up a militia, <laughs> they don't care what we do over here. So we're going to take it over there where they can see it. And they can't turn the blinders to it. Yeah. Yeah, no. It, that's... So, like, kudos to all the people organizing that, too, because I know that's a beast of its own. Good oh, job, Glenn. Man. Good job, Haley. And I don't want to go through the list of names because I know I'll miss a couple. But everyone who's involved in that convoy, good job. Yeah, it's definitely interesting to see like how well they're putting that together and how fast. Yep. That's a big thing to fucking plan in such short little time. Because when did they start planning? I seen something along, probably like around December fifteenth would be the. I think that'd be pretty accurate. Yep. It was. I think it was after the yeah. first NISQ rally. Then people started saying, "Hey, this works." Yeah. And it's easy to get out there and be involved in this, right? Yeah. It, were you out there for that one? I, I didn't make it out there for that. Um, I had a buddy that was down there and took a couple of videos for it. It was those, insane. Yeah. That's, it was insane, it was insane man. There were so many fucking vehicles there. It was absolutely insane. It was incredible. There were so many uh, trucks, just people on the side of the road. There was fucking, you know. It was incredible. It was like, hey, I heard a, I heard a rumor on that, and I, like I never really got full, um, full background. Uh, I heard that there was someone who was trying to get. They were in an ambulance. There was an ambulance that was held up a little bit that had to take the shoulder. I don't know if that was true, but I want to take the time since everyone's listening that that, if that did happen, that that uh, that we apologize that we don't condone holding up uh, emergency services. This isn't like the Black Lives Matters, yeah, uh, you know, protest in the states. That's not what that is about. Um, and everyone has been like everyone on that convoy knows that if there's emergency vehicles coming the road will split down the middle like the sea did for <laughs> for Noah nobody's trying to screw Canadians around this is the exact opposite actually yeah yeah absolutely just wanted to clear that up so then are you going to be joining them in that convoy too or are you trying I would, to make I it? would love to I yeah. would love to if someone's got a seat for me I'd love to be there I know we got a couple of guys with uh, professional photography yeah. uh, experience that want to be along on that it's just Man, this is gonna be one of the biggest. Like, this is, if if nothing else, it's just the, the act of that many Canadians standing behind one thing. This is the beginning yeah. of something huge, and I love it. And I'm proud to see, just proud, just proud to be Canadian. And peaceful too. Yes, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, what's what's radical about that? Yeah. Everyone doing the speed limit and not it's not a zoom zoom commercial like the Mazda where they use the, <laughs> the three car weave. It's yeah. nothing like that. It's it's a bunch of concerned citizens that are just tired of not being listened to. Right, like, I just, I, I say it all the time, but it's the best way, I just, I'm sure a lot of people feel like I do, I'm just being told to shut up and eat my vegetables because it's good for me, and there's no discussion, there's no debate, it's just the way it's going to be. That's communism, guys, <laughs> you got to wake up. Big time. You find that you're getting uh, more attention from the law or police officers or anything like... No, not so much. Um, I had some good advice from activists, like people have been kind of giving me guidance the whole way. And we've always went about this the right way. We're not like Antifa. So when we go to do a, a rally, we do pull a permit. I do call the police, let them know. I'm in, like, 
you got to play within the rules. It, we're we're trying. We're protesting. That it's we're not protesting anarchy here. Yeah. It, the the country is pretty good as it is. We just want it to stop going in this direction. So yeah. we don't need. It's it's not about going out there and being radical. We're not trying to give them the ammo to paint people with either. To this date, I don't know where. <laughs> they got the violent radical thing from maybe that first rally in, in at it, legislature. Yeah, there was. Like, but it's about it's about eight seconds of footage, and that, and they've been running with that for a month. Right? It, and it, I don't if I'm correct. There's only like pushing and shoving. There wasn't even punches yeah. thrown. Uh, I think the second one punches were thrown, but um, I mean, there's other people that have footage of that stuff. I was obviously at the mic speaking, but again, it's all coming from Antifa. It's the radical left. Just they're not there to protest. They're there to just cause problems, right? Now that they're not there, <laughs> it's all it's a family event. Really, yeah, uh, there, there's literally three-year-old kids down there telling, like, they have signs saying, "You stole my future," <laughs> and it's great. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's the Antifa thing is is weird to me. It's, it's new to me too. I had no idea it was here. I thought it was like a failed reality TV concept that never made it to Canada, but no, they're here. It's um again, paid protesters, man. They're not all paid protesters. I know that for a fact. Some of them are organic, but. It's very organized. It is funded. They're not yellow vests yeah. or not. We're all like, as as you guys have probably seen, we're kind of making this up as we go, and I feel like we're getting pretty good at it. Yeah. But the the radical left, the, they're they're organized as hell. They're funded, man. Big time. Right. The more I read about the stuff that's happening in the states, the more worried I get about what's going to happen here. Yeah. Right. Well, they're they're very organized. Well, they're considered domestic terrorists in the states. I don't know why they're still allowed yeah, to I've do their that. thing here in Canada, but it's yeah, they they're pro violence. If it's if they feel like they're justified, it's it's fascism. The yeah. anti-fascists are fascists. Well, you look at all these like uh, events where Ben Shapiro or um, oh, Peterson. Yeah. Yeah. Jordan Peterson, and then. Uh, Milo, how do you say his last name? I know you're talking about yeah, Yakinopapis yeah. or something. Yeah. Sorry, we said your name wrong. I know we did. <laughs> <laughs> do you see those guys show up at universities and stuff like that? And it's, fu- man, it looks like a Rage Against the Machine concert. I know. For fuck's sake. I know. Like, I know. I know. It's insane, man. Like, and it's it, that's the thing is that's what's so uh, hard for me to swallow about this. I'm sure these people from Antifa think they're doing the right thing. I th- I'm sure they think they're justified. But in case you didn't know. <laughs> Someone saying something you don't agree with is not oppressive. You stopping someone from saying something just because you don't agree with it, that's oppressive. Right? Oh, yeah. You guys are the very Fuck. thing that you're trying not to fight. So, <laughs> I don't know, give your head a shake and readjust your, your moral compass, I guess. Yeah, they, they, like, uh, I guess when it comes to them, the... the, the like, fucking at their protests and stuff like that, it's... there's. You can tell that they don't want any open and no. co- a conversation at all. This is like fucking. You got one group over here beating the fucking piss out of cymbals and trumpets and all that. And zoos and yeah, yeah, it's just it's it's strange to me. It's just like but um, effective, right? It is, and that's what I mean. They're very organized. They know what they're doing. Because like I was sitting in the back, like I went to that other rally and just was yeah. sitting in like I was like I wanted to see this from my own eyes and like. If, just see what's going on and just sit in the back and not get involved or whatever. Yeah. I mean, like, you got uh, a bunch of dudes on this side just kind of standing and smoking and not really, you know, cheering and, yeah, fuck, we agree with you. Yeah. And then on the other side, you have, like, trumpets and a guy with a megaphone, and it's almost like it, you can tell that they want to stir something up. Yeah, but the funniest thing I find is that that's the only rally that gets CBC news coverage or global news coverage. They show up at the cameras every weekend for that. Yes. Because it fits their stupid little story. Yes. Right? I mean, I've given five interviews to CBC, like like I said earlier already, not a single one has made it to the news yet. Not a single one. Yeah. Because it doesn't fit their narrative. Yeah. They don't... uh well, especially like a, a guy like you, you're young, educated, and like... No, I'm not that educated. I fake it till I make it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you know more than... Uh, like, I've been paying attention in, like, some of these Facebook Lives I'll tune into for yeah. five minutes, and it's, like, guys that... Uh, like, I went and I requested, and I talked to one guy for, like, fuck, I don't know, 15 minutes, and it was just, like, I don't know. I don't know. He, I, he, I guess what I'm trying to say is I, I talked to him and I was like, yeah, you know, like I, I support the movement and all this, but just the narrative that I, my social media page is all about and like how we address things and how we look online and like all that, it's just not going to help you guys because yeah. they think 
you know, if they wanted to make a fucking villain out of me, it's very easy. And if I'm out there in a yellow vest and all that... No, absolutely. And, I understand that 100%. Yeah. I think you just showing up and, and uh, giving some honest media coverage was the most valuable thing you could have done. Absolutely. Before, right? and, like, and, and there's other people. Uh, we got a civil activist, Doug Brinkman, who's actually an independent journalist. He's, mm. he's been picketing outside legislature for over 90 days trying to get a press pass. Uh, from what I understand, it's only because he doesn't work for the Journal or for the Sun or have a corporate pass. He's not allowed to speak to anybody in Parliament. Like, he's he's any less of a journalist. Um, he, he doesn't wear a yellow vest there either, but that's because he still supports us. But again, it's, <laughs> especially in the first couple of weeks, there's a very nasty title that comes with wearing that yellow vest, right? Yeah. It took a couple of us to just say, we don't care. This, yeah. is more, this is more important. I'm not here to be popular. I don't really care. You could smear me through the news. I'm not a poster boy anyway, so by all means, yeah. have at her. But this is more important than any one person's, uh, you know, I don't want to use the word dignity, any one person's uh, reputation. Yeah, right? absolutely. By all means, rip my reputation. I told Antifa, I've been off since May. What job are you going to get me fired from? <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. I love it when somebody's like, I'll get you fired from your job. I'm like, I'm my own boss, yeah, man. What here, are you going to do? Take my card. <laughs> yeah. Fire me. You want, you want me to, like, fire my whole crew, too? And yeah. you want me to just, like, start something, maybe the safety kittens or something yeah. like that? I can do something different. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but that's it. It's just such the... Take my photo. Put it all over. That's the way we've been going, right? It's yeah. The, the, the left... Again, I don't like doing this right versus left thing, but, I mean, a lot of people understand what I'm saying when I use those, those, ter those terms. So, um like just being the loudest does not make you the rightest no Do you know what i mean no just, it doesn't just screaming and being uh you know just because something makes you uncomfortable doesn't mean it's not a fact yeah <laughs> we're trying this this half this half this movement's about spreading information i can't wake anybody up that doesn't want to be woken up so all i can do is leave you a, a trail of breadcrumbs and i encourage people to read a little bit on their own and trust me, when the truth starts to wake you up, at the same time, it will piss you off oh, when you realize man. what's been going on. Oh, yeah. Like, going back to what you first said, like, screaming at one another. And, like, yeah, if I fucking read some things that piss me off, but, <laughs> and like, my girlfriend gives it to me all the time because then some of these nights I just sit there and I'll be, like, on CBC's newest post that yeah. I've read and I'm like, fuck this guy I'm like <laughs> losing my mind and she's oh like, you're talking about on the comment threads yeah I don't even touch them anymore man oh I just like I gotta shut that down yeah it's it's, I, uh, it's a waste of your emotional energy honestly it is read it and just uh, whatever yeah I, like I can't convince them well it's like like I, well, that's how I came to the conclusion that some of these people you start to see the paid lobbyists because when some of them were you they'll even <laughs> you can bait them into an intelligent conversation but as soon as they come to a fact that they don't agree with that's when the screaming comes back that's actually when the punches get thrown when they it's they don't they don't like yeah. being made wrong right when people yell at them anyone across Canada if you're listening to this don't engage Antifa they're they're the internet trolls in real life you don't feed them they don't grow but when you scream at them and and you yell at them and you call them idiots you're, they, they feel validated they feel like they're more right you yeah. know what I mean take the ammo away to rave from them mm -hmm. we've pretty much ignored them in Edmonton and I've I think what five of them showed up last weekend they didn't even get close to us turn around and left because they realized they weren't gonna have a good time there yeah but it's it, it no matter what group it is you don't i don't want people afraid to speak in their own country about how their government is being run that's that is still a right of yours for right now oh nobody yeah. should be scaring you away from that and the people who are scaring you away from that again it's that's fascism antifa is the exact thing that they they swore they were fighting the hypocrisy again it's that's like the that's like the the theme to all this that pisses me off it's just the hypocrisy hypocrisy everywhere yeah oh yeah and like well, and I, what one thing that just baffles me is uh, you guys will plan and uh, a protest, get the right permits to all this shit that needs to go down. Like, I don't know the first thing that planning a protest. Yep. Uh, obviously, it takes a little bit of structure and it takes people to get your speakers in line and like ha have all this stuff set up. When those weasels on the like the Antifa, yeah. they literally just show up somewhere. Oh, just their to... mom wakes them up at about 11:30, and they crawl out of the basement, yeah. put on their leather jacket and, and their face mask. Still make exactly, a difference. exactly. They, it's, they, it's, yeah, you, 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 you nailed it, and that's why the police don't really respect them either, right? Yeah. Um, for the most part, and they're not. Allowed, I don't think the police are allowed, or any government official is allowed to say that they agree with us when we have some dissent with the government. Yeah. But they have appreciated our approach that it's professional and it is peaceful, and we are worried about public safety number one. Yeah. And clarity of message. We don't tolerate hate speech at our rallies. It's it's 
it's not it's not what you've been reading in the headlines the only way to really see it guys is to come down to your local rally honestly yeah you want to see what it's really about and then if you it's something you do agree with then maybe lend your voice to ours maybe help, help push us a little bit forward but the main thing is it's you can't really make a proper judgment unless you come down there and hear it straight from the horse's mouth right? absolutely yeah that's that's what piqued my interest when i started seeing these is like okay well I can't sit back and just like watch one person's YouTube video on what they think this is and then watch another one and they think it's like this. You got to go down and get your own yeah. idea of what's going on and see things for your own eyes because fuck, visuals can be tricked all day long. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah definitely man. And it, it doesn't take much and even just like the little bit of editing and stuff like in like what we do here in house. it's. It's very easy to trick the mind into think, uh, yep. like thinking something. Even Absolutely. the memes. And, that, and that's why we even we were staying away from, officially, the group that we're kind of trying to organize from each province across Canada. We were trying to stay away from media in the beginning altogether just because we know it only takes them... Like, all they're looking for is that little three-second excerpt that they can take, twist, and edit. Yeah. Right? So we weren't giving any media, but the problem with that is... <laughs> The media is going to speak to anyone that'll speak, right? And there's a lot of people pretending. There's a there's a lot of provocateurs, a lot of actors. Yeah. Right. So I, it's, it's a tough thing. It's a, that's uh, that's the strength and the and the curse of it. It's anyone can go out buy this five dollar vest and put it on, but at the same time, any dickhead can try and run it into the ground, right? Yeah. It and all it, t- it takes one guy, and then and then it's there. It is. Yep. That's all they looked for. There it is. And it's like I've been guilty of it too, where. Um, I shared a video of this cop punching this kid in the face. Like, a, it was a 16, 17-year-old kid. Yeah. He's skinny. He didn't need to hit him in the head. Like, did not need to punch him. And I fucking, of course, in my mouth, uh, fuck the police. And like, <laughs> 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 I posted this, and, man, it was out of Lethbridge, and I created a fucking landslide off of it. Yeah. And, like, this guy was taken to, is it Acer? To, is that the... I think so, yeah. When, is, yep. When something like this happens, he got taken to that, and like it got like fucking national news coverage, and like it fucking. And it should, right? Oh that, yeah. And that, that's the thing, people. Do we realize that the the social media can be used for so much more than what we're using it for? Like that's why these yellow vest pages are getting attacked. That's why yeah. all of our social media networks getting attacked. They want you to just sit there and click on pictures of puppy dogs and fart jokes and like th- this is what they want you to do they want yeah. you to waste your time while they screw you mm-hmm. while you're not paying attention because you're playing sudoku on your phone while you're taking a crap right? <laughs> yeah. it's, re- it's really what it is it's a look look at my right hand while i use my left hand to rip the wallet out of your pocket yeah right oh yeah you see it all the time when like um but, but just to get yeah. to, I, I know i kind of rambled oh, there but to get yeah. back to that point is it's this it's a tool that can be used to, to, to have effective change if people use it properly yeah. just like how, how you said by all means that guy should be arrested for that people are in a position of power have more of a should have more of a prerogative to, to handle themselves in you know in a just way with with virtue like you're a leader yeah you, yeah. you, you know better right and you should feel like and especially in the hands of a police officer yeah. you should feel safe like well any any authority any any leader yeah. like a teacher anybody you know better like kids Kids are idiots. <laughs> we, they are. we all know that firsthand. But like, you, you're supposed to be supposed to be someone that knows better, right? Yeah. And when it comes, God knows what the kid did prior to that video. But if you feel like your life is threatened from a 16 year old kid, yeah, you're probably in the wrong line of duty. <laughs> yeah. You might want to change your fucking. Yeah. How hard would it be to like apprehend that kid and like arrest him or whatever you need yeah. to do? You are a grown ass man. This kid is fucking 130 pounds, five seven, mm-hmm. and you can't ta- like. Keep no, and I agree. I agree, but, but at the same time, it's like we we're talking before. I don't, I don't want to paint any one group yeah. on the actions of any one person. There's so no. many good cops out there too. Oh right? fuck yeah! But uh, to to the point, is there a couple of idiots in the yellow vest? Absolutely, there is. Just like there's a couple of idiots in your cops or in the police station. There's a couple of idiots at the We're hospital. Wearing our shit. In your government, yeah, a couple yeah. of idiots on the danger cat pages for fuck sure, yeah. man, for sure. So yeah, we can't. It, it, this the identity politics thing is one of the worst things going for the world right now. I think. Yeah. The, oh. This tribalism, this you versus me, this the the color versus color, age versus age, religion versus religion. This is all <laughs> we're playing right into their hands, is what I'm saying. Well, as long as we're yeah. fighting each other, we're all weak. Oh, for sure, absolutely. And 
yeah, like getting back to like what you say is this the, the, the divide between one another is the creating this frustration and this angst yep. and it's not taken out on the proper um, like being the government. Yeah, the it's, route where it's coming from. Yeah, it's taken out on one another and it's getting, you know, at least it's something <laughs> instead of everybody sitting and with their thumbs up there. Yep. At least it's something you're creating a, a little bit of a of tornado and getting shit kind of mixed up a little bit and like maybe one day well it will happen i get it it'll for sure happen but when that kind of settles down and everybody's like well what the fuck why don't we just talk this out yeah that's what we've been trying to say this whole time yeah absolutely <laughs> and absolutely and that's and you know there's um uh, some of the international guys they're talking from australia from france because we are talking with all these guys i made a point um I think Canada is the only yellow vest country that has like 800 groups. Everyone's a yellow vest, but everyone's got their own direction and their own kind of secret agenda. Some people are selling stickers and some people are selling tubes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, That's the capitalism in us. Well, it's also, again, it's just it's just the divide and conquer thing, right? Yeah. Everyone needs to have control. There's nobody has control of this movement. The whole point of this movement, um, well, mainly in France, right? Uh, you guys must have read about Rick by now. It's the referendum initiated by citizens. Yeah. Um, so the group that I'm involved with, uh, and there's a bunch of different groups, this is where I'm getting at here. The group that I'm involved with, we went back to a mission statement that was waking the people up in weeks one and two. We were watching explosive growth. Yeah. And that was because of, we were protesting the carbon tax, the attack on pipelines, and how it's affected, affected by the Paris Accord. And then also the global, the UN migrant compact for safe and orderly whatever. And that's just an attack on sovereignty. Both of those coming back to the sustainability agenda or agenda 21 agenda 30 depending on which one you've read the 30 is a lot scarier um but so yeah i, I want to rally we are rallying people in the group that i'm rallying we need to wake enough people up to the idea that there are problems in this country yeah otherwise why would you care about a solution you don't need a solution if it's not broken don't break if it's not broken don't fix it right? exactly but there's uh, once you wake up to that um there's other groups here that are, are posing justice solutions you'll find so there's United Yellow Vest pages with the pages I'm involved in. We got that mission statement. There's uh, there, there are Rick pages too. There's there's I implore you, and I have been talking to my memberships of the pages I'm in. Don't pick one. Not, don't take anything for testament. Get into all these groups. Be involved in all the conversations. Like that's the number one thing. Get mm -hmm. people thinking. Get everything going here. Because it's great that yeah we're talking about the problems, but eventually we will need a solution. And I think the whole country should be involved in deciding that solution. Yeah. So that being you know get out there. Get in all the groups if you have to. Don't don't get in any of the groups if you don't want to. Just get to the rally. But you, you got to read. You got to research. You got to make your own choices. Don't take what I'm ta don't say take what I'm saying for granted. I mean, I'm only as smart as what I read, and even some of that shit's questionable, right? <laughs> Cross reference what like you you have the internet now. <laughs> you learn for yourself. For God's sakes, you not be taking your news from CBC and Global anymore. <laughs> no. And it's even with that migration pact, when you read into it and like everything that you read is like, oh, it, it was all written by the United Nations. Yep. So it's no different than like, you know, PETA coming out and be like, we don't kill animals. Look at all these articles we mm -hmm. have. And we wrote them about ourselves. So, you know, it's true. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So get a third. As soon as they brought a third party in, it's the. It, changes the whole fucking narrative though of what you just said well like, it's and you know how you know how can you expect someone who doesn't live here like you're having a policy made by somebody who isn't canadian they're they're making the policy having it enforced on canadians and it never had the bet like canadians were never meant to benefit from it right mm -hmm. we were we were an afterthought not not that's it yeah it's just being it's just being rammed down our throats and it's got happening faster and faster that's what's scaring me. It's not getting media coverage, so you don't really get to talk about it. Nobody really knows what's going on. No. The ones of us who do talk about it are called conspiracy theorists yeah. or radicals, right? It's all one big just hairball of a fuck up going on across this country. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't know how else to explain it, man. It's just the, like it's for the people who are awake to what's going on. They're getting madder and madder, and I don't blame them. It's it's a it's a crooked card game going on here oh fucking right and it's even like um what's it in that in that one uh one little sentence there and it's like you can't speak uh r badly about the migration pact and this or that, certain ideologies there's certain... something i wanted to bring out and for the most part i don't we don't talk about islam or anything at, at our rallies and i don't think that and again it's not muslims i don't think most muslims are, are peace-loving people i really do want to uh, believe that 
right? But it also, I think, in Stalinist Russia, most Russians are peace-loving people, and socialism still killed tens of millions there. Yeah. Right? Same with Maoist China. So it, it's nobody, uh, and even in, even in the people that come to my Edmonton rally, there's nobody there that's 100% against any one group of people. But I think everyone should be opening an eye to radical anything. And that's not just the left. It's the radical left and the radical right. Yeah. Thing, right? Radical anything is wrong. Oh yeah. Right. Whether it's ra- there's radical Christians out there. Yeah, absolutely. And and again, everyone has a voice in this, but it's we're trying to make this all inclusive as possible because the only chance we really have is to stand up as a country all at once. Yeah. Right. And I mean, we, and we are divided, and we're divided by a system. And it's always been that way. It's always been east versus west. And it's always been, you, you know what I mean? We're spread so far across, and so and so uh, sparsely populated on this huge country. Don't until the internet we didn't really get to communicate with each other and figure out who's getting screwed in this province or how yeah. bad this <laughs> farmer's taking it up the ass right? yeah exactly but, all you had was like a pen pal in grade five that yeah. you could talk to in yeah. ontario <laughs> <laughs> but uh no it's people are waking up that's information's moving fast guys use it use it for something that matters not just no offense but you know tits and ass on snapchat's great but there's important things happening in the world right now oh fuck yeah i encourage you <laughs> to get up to speed on it you discrediting my Snapchat? <laughs> no, I'd never do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it is good to see that Canadians are taking a stance for it, one. Uh, like, well, it, and it's in this is the first that I have ever had involvement with uh, a movement like me, this. Me as well. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a political activist by any means, right? No. It's just, I I watched what was happening. And you, everyone could feel the momentum coming up. That's why we jumped on. That's why week one started the week that it started because France was turning crazy, right? Yeah. So we were following that momentum. But the bad thing about that is the, the, the actors that are there to try and uh, sideline this crap, they were on the ball too. So they showed up with their yellow vests and their face masks and acted like idiots. Yeah. Right? It's, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just such an organic thing. And uh, it's still kind of a young movement. We're tra- and I feel that the direction is getting a lot better. But again, um, I just want everyone to look at all the information, take in all the narratives, get involved in all the conversations, and then make your own choice. Yeah. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to Hack. Don't listen to Sock Boy in Parliament there. For God's sakes, don't listen to his ooh, uh, 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 bullshit. <laughs> you got to be able to, you got to be a critical thinker. You need. We need a, a nation thinking for itself. And I know that we have a lot of smart people in this country. It just people feel so disenfranchised because when was the last time your vote meant anything? Right? Yeah. We're, even, try, we're trying to change that. Yeah, or even some of these smart people that come out and they just get scrutinized. You know, you're racist for yep. thinking like that. And they yep. kind of like, unless you have a, a backbone and or like, you know, this fuck you kind of mentality, it kind of shut, it do, well, it kind of, it does shut it definitely you does. up. It, you, de- it definitely does. It's you, a form of bullying. We, we need the hard asses. And absolutely it is, man. And, that, and that's fascism. And that, that's, mm-hmm. uh, that's, you're, you're intimidating people to out of having a certain belief with some sort of political motivation right like yeah. to me that's terrorism is it not yeah you're, you're, it's <laughs> definitely a form of it <laughs> right <laughs> but uh, i'm hoping the government catches up to that quickly but i, I you know we, we we're going to carry on doing what we're doing we're going to carry on doing what we're doing our message is getting clearer and clearer uh, more and more people aren't believing the myths because they're actually coming down to hear it and when they come down and hear something they like they bring someone new the next time that's exactly the way this needs to go forward and uh yeah just get educated guys just Get, get all the facts for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. absolutely. Right on, man. Well, that, we've reached our hour mark, Jeremy. Thanks, Wicked. Thanks for coming in. Um, before you go, let anybody know where you, uh, if you got any rallies planned, uh, where they can find you or the movement. Yep, for anything sure. Anything like that. Get, get um, your shout out in. For us, uh, I'm at Yellow Vest Edmonton, or I think it's United Yellow Vest Edmonton. Anyways, you'll find it. All the banners are the ones with the poppies in the background. Uh, we're going to have, it, it's not really hard to find. If you come to your area, the rallies are every Saturday and they're not going to stop. You don't need to go to a website for that. They're not going to stop till the change happens. So legislature this weekend at 11 a.m. till 1 p.m. We'll have a couple of speakers come out and then we're going to we're going to march Jasper Ave for exposure again. Um, every major city has the same uh, same events, right? Yeah. I still think, uh, even though I'm not involved in it, I think www.yvc.me has the events on it. I've uh, broken away from them a little bit because they're. I, Pretty sure they're going towards monetizing and merchandising stuff, which I don't really have any care for. But it's still an <laughs> avenue to find out how to get to your rally, right? Yeah. Um, and the other one, look up on that uh, the uh, Yellow Vest convoy headed to Ottawa. That's that's going to be a huge splash, and anybody that can that can help in that in any way, whether it's a donation of ten or five or ten bucks towards a gas card for these guys to drive there, or pulling your own rig out and and, and making some noise. Um, 
let's wake these guys up yeah absolutely right on cool well thanks for having me man yeah no thanks for taking the time and coming and chatting me about this i've always been interested in it like it's nice to talk to somebody that's actually heavily involved with it so. yeah well and i'm you know most of our most of the people that are showing up are you know they're in the baby baby boomer generation i'd like to see more people my age that give a shit show yeah. up right so this yeah. is the call to you cats there we go make sure to show up to the edmonton legislator or wherever you are in your local city yeah Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and we'll catch you next week with another podcast.